Georgia, your state is central uh, to this investigation uh, with Donald Trump uh, tr thinking about sending Jeffrey Clark there, making the phone call to the Secretary of State. What has happened in Georgia since all of that that can give us more confidence that that couldn't happen again? Unfortunately, Georgia remains in the center of conversations about voter protection and voter integrity, in part because while we had two leaders who did the right thing for one day on the issue of certifying that election, Brian Kemp and Brad Rafsenberger have been part of the dog whistle approach to amplifying those very same challenges. The passage of SB202 was a direct response to January 6th. It bought into the notion that there was a lack of integrity in our elections and thus something had to be done. And their decision was to suppress the very voters who turned out in 2020 and 2021 to make their voices heard, some for the very first time. While we should applaud anyone who does their job, we should not lionize those who do their jobs on one day, but spend the rest of their careers undermining voting rights. And sadly, that's what we've seen happen with Brian Kemp and Brad Rafsenberger. To uh, please Donald Trump, Attorney General William Barr sent FBI agents to Georgia to question poll workers and election workers uh, in Georgia, which had to be a pretty intimidating experience, but it wasn't the worst of what they suffered. Let's listen to what Ruby Freeman told the committee. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security all because a group of people starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay, to push their own lies about how the presidential election was stolen. How can you protect Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shay Moss, from that kind of attack in the future? Sadly, the most important thing we can do is ensure that we have elections that are free and fair and are not clouded under the guise of concerns about voter fraud. We know that didn't happen in Georgia. There is ample proof it didn't happen. I know Ruby Freeman. We've spoken several times. And I can tell you that what she did, what she underwent, what happened to so many election workers who felt threatened is a direct result not only of what happened on January 6th, what preceded it, but it's also part and parcel of legislative leaders and the governor and secretary of state passing a new law on voting that was designed to quietly respond or actually loudly respond to the innuendo without ever using the words. Until we say that everyone who is eligible to vote should have access to the right to vote and we stop using this coded language to suggest that even though they don't say it out loud, there was some something wrong with the 2020 election, then we're going to continue to see these challenges. But the fact that in Georgia there's new voter subversion, there's election subversion language that allows local politicians to change the composition of elections boards. It allows the state to step in and take over the administration of elections simply on the word of some who may not be valid. We are going to continue to have concerns. But what we can do is make certain that everyone who wants to vote can and that we have candidates who are willing to tell the truth about what happened, what didn't happen, and how we are all committed to making sure every voice is heard in this election. Republicans have a coordinated 50-state uh, campaign to replace election workers like Ruby Freeman with their own election workers uh, and to drive out secretaries of state and take over those offices so that they can supervise elections. Uh, what are Democrats doing? What are you doing in Georgia to try to encourage election workers to stay in place? The organization I founded, Fair Fight, has been doing remarkable work assisting election workers, working with counties and communities to ensure that they know what their rights are. We are proud of the election protection infrastructure we've built here in Georgia that is comprised primarily of nonpartisan organizations. Because we've got to remember, these threats didn't simply attack voters of color. They didn't simply attack Democrats. They attacked the integrity of our elections, the underpinning of our election infrastructure. 
That's one thing we can do. But the other thing is we can elect B. Wynn as the next secretary of state. We can elect me as the next governor of Georgia. We can give Georgia election officials confidence that they are going to be supported by two people who have proven time and again that we believe in the integrity of our elections and we believe in free and fair access to those elections. As you go forward in this campaign, what is your confidence level of the votes being accurately counted in your election? I believe that we can have a free and fair election when we make certain that voters know what's at stake and they know what their opportunities are. We saw in the primary that we had record turnout on both sides of the aisle. But what was more impressive to me is that we had new voters who joined the, the throng. What we do have to provide, though, is information, education, and a reason to vote. That's why I'm working hard every single day to give people the plans, the comprehensive plans they need to know why being in this election in 2022 matters so much. That's why today I announced the public safety plan that's going to talk about how we protect everyone in Georgia, including those election workers, but more importantly, how we protect the communities they serve and the communities they come from. We need to have public safety and justice in Georgia. And that extends from voting rights to just being able to go outside, take your kids to a movie, being able to go to a park without fear of violence and fear of losing your right as a citizen to enjoy our communities. What can you share with us before you go about your own conversations with Ruby Freeman and what she's been through? We know that Ruby Freeman has faced untold peril, that she faced threats. But what she needs to know is that as the next governor of Georgia, my plan is to make certain that she has the protection she needs, but that she also has the safety of knowing that justice is going to be done. We need a governor who believes in both public safety and justice, that's going to invest in our public safety officers, but also invest in our communities. Ruby Freeman is an example of why we need good leadership. She should never have been subjected to those challenges, but she also should have gotten help and support in recovering her life. I'm proud to be one of the people who's been trying to be quietly supportive of her, but she needs a public leader who says to her and to everyone who faces these challenges that we stand with you, that we can protect you, but that we will also make certain that you never face these challenges again. That's why I want to be the next governor of Georgia, because I have a record of standing with voters and standing on the side of safety and justice and standing on the side of free and fair elections.